Hey, welcome back to Velox 18. We're in Lebanon, Ohio, and uh, we're gonna head over to make our delivery today over in, um, uh, what is it? Washington Courthouse. It's one of those unique names. I've just figured I'd remember it without even looking at it, but Washington Courthouse, Ohio. Um, and uh, yeah, we got a 3 p.m. appointment, so we got a whole day to just kind of waste before we go make our delivery. Um, we're about 45 minutes away. I can show up at two o'clock. As with all Walmarts, you can get there an hour early. So I um, figure I'll leave, leave here around, um, around one o'clock. So um, it's now actually almost 11. Um, kind of just had a slow morning. Uh, edited my video did all that kind of stuff. So um, That's kind of where we're gonna leave it But right now I'm gonna go in here and get some breakfast at this country kitchen and um, Start my day like that. So uh, I'm gonna get in here and eat some food. You guys roll the music That was good. I think I got, I think they called it like a country boy skillet or something like that. But it was like diced ham, bacon, sausage, uh, hash browns, and uh, and then scrambled eggs. And then um, I got a pancake on the side with that. And then I got a half order of biscuits and gravy, just one one biscuit with some gravy. And uh, man, it was a feast for like 15 bucks. Not bad if you ask me, not bad. But uh, anyway, we got some more time left. So I'm just gonna be looking on the load board for loads for next week and we'll see what's going on on there and then just hang out a little bit more. I gotta use my other hand to unlock my door so you guys gotta go away now. So I'll catch up with you guys later. I just wanted to show you guys the load board. So this is like looking for uh, after I go out west I'm going to be looking to come back from Arizona and well the first one's a team load that's 2,900 miles and they want to pay 6,800 on that one and these are for uh, uh, today's date actually because I want to see what um, what the loads are paying like you know day of not t uh, a week out so I'm looking for loads that I, I just want to see what the lane is paying. Um, so like this one is darn near 2,000 miles and um, oh but look no it's more than that two drop finals in Monroe Township New Jersey so this one you got to go make a drop in Atlanta and then finish up in New Jersey which is a little ways away from Atlanta I don't know if you guys know that um, so that's actually probably like 3,000 miles dang near um, so, you know, like, like 2,300 miles, Yuma to Melbourne, Florida, and 5,600 bucks. That's how much they're asking. So, like 225, 230 a mile, man. It kind of seems like it's the going rate. Everywhere I go right now, the they're trying to get like 225 a mile. This one's all the way back in Mecca, California going to Brazelton, Georgia, and that one will pay 4800 And, you know, to get into back into California, I'd probably have to take a load, but the loads going into California from Phoenix are just, like, ridiculous. Ridiculous. This one almost makes sense, except it's a team. Team load. But that one would get me right back to Tennessee, but it's team load. It's a team load. Let's see. 2,000 miles, 4,500 bucks. And it comes from El Centro, so I'd have to figure something else out. But that's kind of the lane that, you know, that I would be looking for. But day of, it's paying, you know, 250 a mile. Two, no, 225 a mile. So 225 a mile. All right. You guys ready to come out here and make 225 a mile off the spot market on reefer freight when there's actually 
191 loads out there in Phoenix right now. And I know there's not actually 150, 191 because a lot of these are repeats and all that bull crap. But I just use that number as a general just gauge for the for the volume. And uh, you guys want to look at that volume? Let's let's look at the Arizona volume. So, oh yeah, so that's what it is, right? Look at the volume. The the inbound loads are 224. The outbound loads are 173. So last week when I looked at this, it was the other way around. Arizona had way more loads going out than they had coming in. But this week, it looks like I picked the wrong week to go in there. So um, you want these places right here where the, all the outbound loads uh, are more than the inbound loads because that should put just the market dynamics in your favor. Um, like Minnesota's got 213 loads going out and only 27 trucks going in. This is stuff that Sammy Lloyd has talked about a lot. If you've ever watched the Make Sense channel, when he does his DAT uh, load board searches and stuff, he always talks about right there, just the trucks going in, trucks going out. Ah, all right. Well, you guys get the point. Anyway, so not looking like I'm going to be uh, super profitable over the next week and a half. That's, uh, that's kind of just... Oh well. I mean, it's not no well, but it is no well. We gotta do. We'll, we'll try to figure something out, but no guarantees with uh, the market that we're in right now. Merry Christmas! <laughs> all right. Well, I've had enough of all that. Um, it's now one o'clock. A little after one o'clock. So uh, it's time to go trucking, man. It's time to get on our way. We're gonna go head over. To the Walmart Wally World Distribution Center in Washington Courthouse. I keep saying Washington Courthouse like you guys haven't heard of it before. I'm sure you guys remember that is that we're going to Washington Courthouse. I think it's just fun to say Washington Courthouse. Um, <clears throat> weird, uh, weird city name, huh? Weird city name. But um, yeah, we're gonna hit the road. So without further ado, uh, let's do that. Let's uh, let's let's get to let's get to trucking. OTR lane to check in and uh, it's going to be a little bit before we can get in here. We've got a Tyson Foods truck in front of us, a Hirschbach truck, uh, and then a few like other uh, companies that aren't recognizable. But um, yeah see how long it takes for us to get checked in it is uh, 155 so we're an hour and five minutes early for our appointment so as long as this line doesn't take us an hour and five minutes we should be good but uh, yeah usually these things go uh, pretty quick pretty quick there's definitely a good chunk of people here though good chunk of uh, the trucks here. I could have left a little earlier and gotten um, that way I could like actually be checking in up there at 2 o'clock. I'm not in a hurry at all. I have a 7 a.m. pickup tomorrow morning so nothing to be in, in a hurry about. But nobody likes waiting in line, right? But anyway, alright. Uh, we'll get through this line and then we'll see, uh, see what dock we get to. Alright, 
I made it through the line. It's now uh, 2.15, so about 20 minutes in line. She said they don't have a door for me yet, so uh, that happens. That happens. Center receiving is off over here to the left. We'll go over there and get ourselves checked in and see if they give us a, a door to back into. And uh, yeah, see how long this takes. All right, we got checked in. Um, they still don't have a door for us, so they said they'll call me with a door. And then uh, once I get a door, then I'll uh, I'll go and get into a dock. And then they gave me the the phone number to the receiving office, and they said when you get a call for for a door, go dock into the door dolly down disconnect all that good stuff that they make you do at walmart walmart makes you pull away from the stupid trailer uh and um and then once i do that then i call their number and let them know i'm hooked up so now we just wait for a phone call and see how long this takes all right that didn't take very long um they gave me a dock at uh, 241 let's see looks like looks like Yeah, we got a, ooh, can't find it, run! Uh, we got a door, I just got to open up my, um, I got to open up my, uh, I got to break the seal and open up my doors and then we'll back it in. All right, we're in the dock. We got our tandem slid to the back. Now we just got to dolly down meaning lower our landing gear. They call it dollying down. Then we gotta disconnect the truck and pull it forward and then we'll be done. All right, we are dollied down and disconnected and all the good stuff. I called them, I let them know, hey, we're, uh, I'm ready, I'm set. And then uh, this light will turn red like it just did. And then it'll turn green again. And then they'll count the product and they'll do whatever they're gonna do. And then I'll get a phone call from the office to let me know that my paperwork's ready. So usually it takes like two to four hours at Walmart. Um, you know, like like total time from the time you pull into the gate to the time you're leaving, two to four hours. And it's pretty consistent. Like it's rarely over that. I think one time down in Robert, Louisiana, it was more than four hours. But pretty much every Walmart across the country. So it it's kind of nice when you're trying to book loads because you're like, okay, I'm going to a Walmart. So I'm going to be out of there between two to four hours and you can just kind of like count on it. Whereas other places you're like, well, I could get out of there in two hours or I might not get out of there for like eight hours. And you just, you kind of just don't know. So anyway, so I prefer, I don't mind, you know, the, the consistency. Um, I mean, I wish it was consistently like between one and two hours. Cause I think that's more reasonable, but um, at least it's consistent to where when I'm planning and booking, you know, freight ahead of time, I can kind of, you know, uh, make my schedule and, and not, not be, uh, not be too, cause that's, a, that's the thing, right? Like I don't want, sometimes you're intimidated to book a load that that picks up like three hours after your delivery appointment. Cause you're like, I don't know how long that, that delivery appointment is going to take. You know, I don't know. Like if I have an 8am appointment, I need to, I need like a 4pm pickup appointment, uh, to make sure that I have, uh, the, the, the stuff off the truck. Like it just kind of, um, sometimes it's a little, a little hairy like that. So anyway, I like Walmarts for that reason. They're consistent. Um, I'm, I'll, I'll be honest. I'm starting to regret, uh, booking this load out to Arizona. It should be the produce season out of Yuma. That's, that should be kind of what's going on. Nogales and Yuma should be kind of like hopping right now. There should be good paying freight, uh, produce loads coming out of there. Um, they, I'm, I'm sure there are, they're just, you know, already they're not hitting the spot market so that's the thing with trucking right now is you've got you know the spot market is the is the leftovers and there's not a lot of leftovers um because even if it's brokered freight a lot of those smaller brokerages they already have trucks that they, they they're trying to keep busy because those trucks take care of them when when the time comes and so they try to take care of the trucks and you know there's a mutual relationship between brokers and and carriers uh in most cases so um in in this case where a carrier is running exclusively off the uh, the load board, off the spot market. It, it's a recipe for 
going out of business right now in the in the conditions where you're in um, it can be done for you know if someone has really low overhead and stuff and I've told you guys I don't have super low overhead I've got a truck payment a trailer payment um, house bills are fairly um, low but still not with the price of groceries these days I, a family of, of five plus one at college uh, it gets expensive just to eat food so um, anyway so I say all of that because you know like there's a there, there's there's people who have like connections either with direct customers or with just brokers who are fair brokers and you know those loads aren't going to hit the load board like I got an email from a fair broker he has a load um, that picks up on Friday tomorrow and delivers like 400 miles away I think I'm pretty sure that's how many miles it is it's pretty close it's, it's like you know, it's like a next day delivery. It's really not a far drive. Maybe even only like 300 something miles. Don't quote me on that, but anyway, uh, it pays $2,000. Now, is that going to hit the load board for a random carrier to find on, on the load board? No, because he has his carriers that he already works with. I'm one of them, but you know, he's, he's going to funnel those good paying loads to, to carriers he already works with and uh, doesn't, the, the spot market won't see it. So there's, there's loads like that all over the place. I just, um, you know, the places where I had those connections building was back out west in California. Uh, so I may call one guy that I haul produce for. Um, now last winter, I ended up doing more cheese than anything instead of, instead of produce. So I kind of shot myself in the foot for finding stuff out of Yuma. I, I think I only went to Yuma once um, out, of the, out of the whole year last year. I only went to Yuma once, so I didn't I didn't build any relationships with with smaller brokerages down there, um, and that's who's going to have the freight right now. That's just that's all there is to it. Uh, carriers are going to have their contract freight, and then brokers are going to have the freight. And so anyway, kind of regretting going down there, but we'll see what happens. We'll keep looking for loads. We're going to get unloaded here, and uh, I'll catch up with you guys once we uh, once we get done. All right, it's three forty seven. 347 and uh, they called me and said I, I got my paperwork in the office it's ready so uh, quick trip man quick trip into uh, Walmart today I like it I like it man this mustache I must have slept on it and drooled on it and it got frozen that way I don't know frozen got stuck that way it's like it's like when your parents tell you your face is gonna get stuck like that you make that face you know keep making that face I, that's what happened to my mustache last night I drooled on it, and uh, hey, mustache, keep making that face. You get stuck like that. Well, guess what? You got stuck like that today. All right, go go pick up my paperwork. I got the farthest dock away from the from the CRO, the Central Receiving Office. So I uh, gonna get my steps in. Let's do it. Let's do it. Just like that, we'll head back over here to the truck, get ourselves hooked back up to our trailer, and we'll get the heck out of here. Alright, let's get the heck out of here. Let's get the heck out of here. one of the only like uh, kind of in inefficient things that they do at these places there's a scale for their guys to scale out that's in the right lane but they want to put their guys in the left lane when you get up here to the window because they don't want their guys to have to get out of their truck so we have to like switch lanes right here at the exit gates but everything else at Walmart's are fairly efficient mostly kind of for the most part all right Go we'll give this uh, little check-in paper um, to them, showing that I got empty, and then they'll let me out of here. All right, we're gonna go right back down the road where we came from, uh, back towards Interstate 71. And uh, there's a TA over there, I think I'm gonna try and find some parking at. If not, there's a Loves. 
on the other side of the interstate. And if not, there's a Flying J down at the next exit. So we'll go scouring around for parking right now. And uh, I think, I think we should be okay though. I mean, it's early still, four o'clock. I think we should be okay to find some parking. So that is the, the current plan. And uh, once, once these uh, the traffic slows down coming from both directions here, then we'll be on our way. Well, that took like a minute and a half. That was a long wait. Finally got the, the go ahead to pull out clear into traffic and uh, go get our parking for the night. We've got a 7 a.m. appointment tomorrow. Um, to pick up in Troy, Ohio, which is just a short drive away. Just uh, gotta head over towards Dayton and then head north, so we uh, should be able to get over there and get started on our uh, westward bound load. Westward bound load. But uh, yeah, that's what we're looking at. Catch up with you guys when we get to the TA. All right, we made it over here to the TA. And um, plenty of parking. Well, this is all reserved over here, but they got plenty of parking. I, I got this diagonal spot, super easy to, uh, to get out in the morning, especially since we're gonna be leaving kind of early, you know, like 6 a.m., maybe like 5.30 a.m. So I'm a little ways uh, walk to the truck stop, but I usually like to do that myself. That's how I roll. I like to be, I like to get my exercise in. Come in, come on. Um, I kind of wanted to go over here. It looks like a 359 over here. But this guy is kind of blocking my view. Uh, walk over here to the truck stop. And then uh, there's actually, there's like, uh, Taco Bell McDonald's, but there's also a Chipotle over there. So I think I'm gonna go get some Chipotle for dinner. Look at that old truck. Cool looking truck, man. Cool looking truck, I like it. It's old and beat up. Just needs a little, just needs a little love and it would be awesome. I know you guys couldn't see it that well, but anyway, all right, get in here. Use the facilities, and then uh, we'll wrap this video up in a GIF. I gotta make a decision. Um, I just had a phone call with uh, a, an interested party who's looking at my truck, and um, basically, they want the truck to, to uh, the, they, they made an offer that I'm willing to take, willing to accept. Uh, we just gotta work out the details on how to get it to them and stuff. But he, he doesn't want the mileage to go up and I had booked a trip out west so the mileage would inevitably go up uh, quite a bit over the next eight days if I was to uh, make this trip. And so um, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna fall off this load for tomorrow morning. And I hate to do that to the brokers. Um, it's not how I run business, but at the same time, um, you know, this is kind of like, um, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things that are in motion right now that, um, selling the truck is kind of the, the tipping point for, and, uh, so I'm eager to sell it, but, um, you know, it's like, but I still have to run it to make a living until I do sell it. But there's going to be that, like that period of time where I, I have to pull it off the road before it can be sold. And so I think that time is now, um, but I'm, I'm not, I just hate doing it. I just hate, I hate, um, I hate backing out of deals. Like, you know, you, you sign your name to something, you agree to do it, you do it. Like, that's just, that's just good business. That's just good being a good human being. That's just, that's just being a man, a man of your word. And so I hate, I hate backing out of it, but, um, yeah, like my whole my whole life kind of hinges on this. <laughs> not to over 
dramatize it, but it, it kind of does. It's kind of uh, a huge, a huge thing going on in my life right now is selling this truck and uh, utilizing that capital to um, make some other deals. Uh, and and time is a little bit of the essence. And so, if I want to make this deal, I need to not put the miles down on it, and I need to work out a way to meet those guys. So anyway, they're going to call me back to make sure they can come this weekend and, and do it. So if they call me back and say they can, I'm going to fall off this load. And and then, uh, I don't know, I might just fall off this load anyway. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the freight wasn't great out west, but that's not what's going on here. I know it's kind of seems like it because I talked so much about the freight uh, out west sucking but I actually saw today as the day got later there was some really good paying stuff um, like $8,000 load that went up to upstate New York which uh, depending on if they're getting lake, lake effect snow or not I would be down to go up to upstate New York I just don't want to go into New York City but um, anyway um, yeah so all that to say um, I hate, I hate doing it, but I think I'm going to do it. I think I'm going to fall off this load, look for something to take me down into Tennessee so I can kind of um, get this deal done. And shoot, man, El Hueso might be uh, on the way out, on the way out. Would you guys still watch my channel if I don't drive El Hueso? I don't know. We're about to find out, I think. <laughs> I called and told them... Uh, that uh, something came up at home and I just have to go. I don't really want to elaborate, um, you know, that on why I'm falling off the load. It's not in my nature to, to hide hide information from people. I just, I, I kind of believe in just being transparent with everything, maybe to a fault. You know, I, I sometimes overshare. Uh, you guys probably know that if you've been watching the channel for any amount of time. Um, but I kind of just, I kind of just left it vague. Like, hey, something came up. I have to point the truck towards home. I can't run out west. Um, you know, if I do, I lose this deal because I put way more miles on the truck than they're willing to, to pay for. And um, and also, for my own sake, you know, before the end of the year hits, I need to utilize that, that money that comes in for this truck to spend on uh, make capital investments of my own but for tax reasons so that it's money coming in, but then money going out and everything kind of hits in the same year. Um, otherwise I'm going to have like this kind of really big in, uh, you know, increase in my revenue, uh, for the year. And it would be difficult to get my tax situation manageable. I would, I would have to pay taxes on the capital gains of this truck. So I, uh, yeah, so I have to, I have to kind of, um, figure that into my equation here. Like I need, I need to kind of get this deal done as quickly as possible so that I can reallocate the capital to the things that I, I'm trying to, uh, you know, get into. So anyway, uh, they were cool about it though. They were cool about it. Um, the guy was, I mean, it was the after hours guy. So it's not like he's going to have like a ton of, you know, skin in the game, I guess. But um, like I'm sure the the guy who's the actual like um, customer rep for those for the for that customer is probably like crap man like we had that that guy and now he freaking canceled on us you know it's like it's it's frustrating when that happens I've had it happen to me on the broker side a number of times where you got a load and everything's lined up and then it's like boom the the bottom just falls out from that load and you're like I have, I have to cancel the next load and the next load because something happened on this load so I understand the 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 sentiment. So I apologized and just was like, man, this isn't the way I do business. Um, you know, kind of just gave him, gave him the spiel, but I just didn't share like, you know, the full, the full story. Cause I just felt like that's not, you know, it doesn't look good. It's not a good look. It's not. And I'm, I, I realize that, but, um, I mean, I just, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta make the decision that I, for, for my business and, it sucks. It sucks to to you know possibly burn a bridge. I mean, if they if they can't get that covered, they they may come back at me and just be like, yeah, we're never working with you again. So, 
Um, I don't want that, obviously. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know. Maybe, maybe they were nice on the phone, but they'll be, uh, <laughs> they'll be very unhappy, um, you know, at, at the end of it. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. But, um, all of that to say, I don't know if I should just, like, honestly, I'm going to wait for this guy's phone call. And if they're going to be there this weekend, I think I'm just going to deadhead home because, there's one load I found that goes all the way down into Atlanta that pays okay, um, but it doesn't even pay really good considering I have to come back from Atlanta on Saturday back up to Tennessee. So it's kind of like, I'm only, it's like six hours, six and a half hours from the house. I'm really not that far away from, you know, it was like 380, 85 miles or something like that. So um, less than ideal uh, for, um, for, you know, making this a, a round trip. <laughs> uh, I didn't. I didn't make that much on this load. I'll be uh, very, very honest with that. Uh, to to pay round trip, but at the same time, um, yeah, I may do that. So anyway, we'll hold tight here for a little bit, and then we'll, we may we may point this thing uh, point this thing south and start heading heading towards home here in a little bit. Um, if yeah. If, if it's going to happen this weekend. If it's not going to happen this weekend, then I'll just maybe book that load down to Atlanta and then try and truck around, but like less miles, you know, like try and try and stay within a normal amount of miles. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We will see. But I'll catch up with you guys uh, once I know what's going to happen, and then we'll wrap this video up. All right. I'm getting out of here. Um... I am going to get the truck uh, home to get it cleaned up. Uh, I think I'm really going to sell it. Uh, these guys are, are uh, well, they're sending someone, they're sending a guy to come look at it and make sure it's all kosher and good. And then, um, and uh, if that happens, on uh, there, he's, he's going to come over Monday and take a look at the truck. So I got to get it home. Um, it's supposed to rain on and off over the weekend, but, uh, it's one thing to have rain, um, when it's sitting in the driveway. It's another thing to get the road grime and all that crap. So I want to get it all cleaned up, get everything I can, uh, make it as cool as, as possible for, uh, for these guys. And, uh, you know, just make sure it's nice, man. It's, they're, they're buying, they're spending a lot of money on a truck. So I want to make sure it's worth their, uh, worth their, their, their time to come all the way out there and make sure it's worth their money to spend on it. Uh, don't want to, don't want to show, have them show up and be disappointed. You know, that's, that's, that would be bad. That would be really bad. So I'm going to take off and start heading back towards the house. There is a possibility. There's one load that, that loads tomorrow morning, goes down to Atlanta. It's an Uber freight load. Um, that load I'm, I'm going to keep an eye on. I may place a bid on it. It picks up uh, just across uh, the Ohio River in, into, or is that the Ohio River? Whatever r river you cross to get into Kentucky. Why is that? I was so confident that it was the Ohio, and now I'm saying guess myself. Anyway, um, yeah, just across the river there from Cincinnati, it's Erlinger, Erlinger, or something like that, uh, Kentucky. So it picks up over there, and then it goes down uh, to Atlanta. So I'm going to bid on it. Uh, I mean, I have a bid already on it, but I'm going to start heading that direction. I may lower my bid like a hundred bucks and see if I can get the, you know, Uber's, Uber's, uh, you know, attention. Like, Hey, this is your last chance. Uh, but not really, uh, uh, not really worried about that. If, if I can't get it, um, it's just as well, you know, I'll just go home and, um, spend the time over the weekend to get everything everything cleaned up make sure the truck looks good and all that stuff so uh that that's how we'll close out the video i'll just put you guys on the on the dash and we'll uh we'll take off and we'll fade off into the into the night all right as i drive down uh unless i end up with this load then maybe i'll come in with an update but i doubt it we'll probably just keep on trucking all the way through to uh tennessee so uh yeah love you guys peace out see you on the next one